All right, all right, all right. I know, I know what you're thinking. Dimitri, what are you making this intro video? What are you, what are you making this video for? Well, there are some people out there who don't know how to do automation things, okay? I am the kind of person who comes to the YouTubes. There are multiple tubes. I go onto YouTube, I make videos, and I say, this is how you do things. You know, I'm a tutorial guy, made a lot of tutorials, and what I'm gonna show you in this video is how to get started using make.com. Now, what is make.com? For those of you that don't know what automation is, I feel sorry for you, but at the same time, your whole world is about to open up. Automation is this fancy thing that you can do with no code tools like make.com. And in this video, we're gonna dive into the different ways that it works and how you can use it for yourself. You can get started absolutely for free. And I remember when I first opened my own world of wonder with make.com, I, I really did, I, my, my life changed a lot, it was really cool. Automations help you save time from doing things that you don't wanna do. Doing things that are duplicative and are just in the same process of what you're gonna end up doing anyway. You can save time on things that are basic, you can save time on things that are advanced. I mean, you can do so many different things with automation. But first, I'm gonna have to explain to you what the heck an automation is in make.com and how to get started. First of all, like I said, you can get started absolutely for free. You're able to build some scenarios. And if you wanna check out the rest of the pricing, I would recommend you do so. I do have an affiliate link down below. And this video is sponsored by make.com, but as you can see, I have a lot of scenarios, which is the first explanation. First explanation is a scenario is essentially the area where you will create your automation. By clicking on this, this first step in the scenario is going to be something that we're going to call the trigger. So a trigger is what is required to happen in order for the scenario to trigger the automation. So in this example, for this video, we're actually just gonna do a very basic one, which is a Google Calendar one right here. So we're gonna type Google Calendar, and it's gonna be a Google Calendar to Notion one-way sync. So there's a few different types of triggers. There are acid triggers, which essentially just watch and wait for something to happen. There are search triggers, which look for things that have happened. So for example, searches for events on a specific calendar, whereas the acid ones are triggers when an event is created, updated, deleted, started, or ended in a specific calendar. And then there is the other starting options, which are things like create or duplicate or update that are more so just actions that start. And what actions are is, is literally everything I just went through. So everything I just explained, this create, duplicate, update, delete, whereas search and watch are the triggers that would start this system. In make.com, you have the option between having these acid triggers and having a schedule run. So for example, every 15 minutes, this scenario would run and you can start with a specific action. But for our purposes, we're going to do watch events. And I'm gonna look for instances where, where in my Rise Productive Calendar, there is a created event. So this is waiting for. It's just waiting for it. Waiting for the amazingness of Google Calendar to work. It's, I wonder, I don't know what I'm saying. Long story short, it's waiting for me to make a new Google Calendar instance. So if I were to then go to Notion, I can have it do any of the following. I can have it create a database item, which for example, could go to a Notion database that would be like a meeting and notes database. So if I were to click create a database item, I then would have to connect it to an ID. Now with anything within make.com, first step for getting all of these going is you're gonna have to add a connection through the API. So like, for example, I logged in to my Google account and I also logged into my Notion account by pressing add here and then doing the Notion public connection and then just giving access through the API and selecting the specific pages that I want to connect to make.com and Notion with. Now, in order to share something specific like this, what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take a example meeting notes page and you'll see here that there is an example event time property that's gonna be in these meetings. All I need to do is share this copy link to the database and then in Notion circumstances, you're gonna delete everything after and including the question mark and then before and including this backslash and that's gonna be your database ID. And then when I click on it again, you'll see that I have some fields I need to fill out. So. I wanna make the start time, whatever the start time is for this Google Calendar event. So let's do start and then I'm gonna type end in here and then we're gonna do end. So these are all the different 
attributes and properties that make up this Google Calendar event. And all I'm doing is, is I'm mapping them to the different properties in something like Notion. And then obviously I want the name to match up. So the item here is actually gonna be the summary that's the name of the name for a Google Calendar event. And then say it's my calendar, I wanna make sure that I select myself as an attendee and then press okay. Now I can create a event within my Google Calendar. For example, for tomorrow at 10 a.m. called business meeting. Really important stuff. And then when I press run once, it's gonna look for the events and it's going to create the recently made events into this calendar. You can see what it found by pressing on this search. You'll see that there's a podcast recording it found in this bundle, which is the item that it found. And then in bundle two, it also found podcast recording as well. And then within here, you see that it created two different bundles. If I go into meetings, you'll see that it created podcast recording one and two, and it has the event time right here with a start and end date. Now, a next level of update that I could do here is actually rather than having a start and end time, I could press include time so that it would actually include the time associated to it like 4 p.m. Now, you may be asking yourself, that wasn't what I put in. And that's because when it comes to the asset events, I didn't put any sort of query associated to it. And what could make more sense is if I wanted to use one of those search examples that I was using. So search events, and then I'm gonna set it to that same calendar. And then I'm gonna put it to where the start date, and then let's go to this date section, is add days, and then now, and then I'm just gonna add one day. So basically looking at everything tomorrow, and instead of me manually running this, what would make a lot more sense actually, would be if I were to first fix all the different properties so that everything lines up again, with summary, and then start end times, and then press save. And then I would set it for it every day, at like midnight or something. I could set it to every day. Let's do it really early in the morning, like two in the morning. It would search the items for the next day, or we could do it late at night, do like uh, 10 p.m. the night before to look for the meetings for the next day. Press run once and you'll see really quickly that it's gonna add all these various items. And then we also wanna make sure that this end date, uh, by the way, before we do anything, it has same date as the start date. And then we can do run once. Now let's change this to two days from now. Now after we run this, you'll see that it'll find the events in the next few days. So tomorrow or the day after, and then it's going to create that database item with a notion. So my end of week, at an improvement sync that I have with my editor. you see it shows the event time, the start and the end time. And on July 28th, is that the case? Boom, 7.15 to 8 a.m. Now in mountain time, which is the default time that I have in my make.com account, it's gonna be an hour behind what it says on my Google Calendar. It's gonna show up perfectly accurate. All my event times are showing up right inside of my Notion which is a nice, quick and easy one-way Google sync between the two. And like I said, rather than me manually clicking run once or doing a watch time, what I can do is I could schedule it to on and just run every night. Now I do have more advanced videos on how to do an entire make.com Google to Notion calendar sync. If you wanna check that video out, there's gonna be a link to it down below. But this is just a baseline of how to get started. Rather than me manually having to click on those different things, and you know, for me, I, I also even have it set up so that for my meetings, when I, when I click on this, the, the agenda auto links to Notion in the calendar. So I, I can like take notes and it's connected to my calendar. So like I got some decently high level automations going within here. Where, we're just scratching the surface in this video. But I wanted to sh show you the power that it can have when it comes to connecting two different things together. I know for me that without make.com and all these automations, I'd have to start from scratch and doing all this manual work and I would dislike it very much. So I'd like to thank make.com, not only for sponsoring this video, but for just existing because you make my life a lot better. Thank you. And I'd like to thank all of you for watching this video and checking out this video on how to improve your productivity even more.